Hi guys, I'm Beth. This is Read Remark, and today we're going to talk about the fascinating new book, The Book of Essie by Megan McLean Weir. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. The Book of Essie is one of a recent crop of books centering around reality television, including The Favorite Sister by Jessica Knoll or Bachelor Nation by Amy Kaufman. It seems to be a really good fount of information. The Book of Essie centers around a 17-year-old girl named Esther, Essie for short. She has recently found out that she is pregnant, which is a huge scandal because for her entire life, she and her entire family have been on this reality TV show about how religious and pious and pure they are. And so this 17 year old girl turning up pregnant throws a real wrench into that image that they're trying to portray. And it's clear from the outset that this is definitely just an image. It's very carefully calculated. It's very crafted and it's very false. Now when Essie turns up pregnant, they have to decide really quick what they're going to do. These are not discussions that Essie is necessarily involved in. These are more discussions between the linchpin mother and the producers of the show. Now, I'm going to try and keep this discussion as spoiler-free as possible, but please be aware that because of some of the parallels I'm going to be drawing between different shows and reality TV in general, this discussion is going to give away some themes and possibly some important plot points within the book. So, beware. If you haven't read the book yet, perhaps you should stop this video, go read it, and then come back afterwards so that we can talk about it. Because really, that's what I just want to do about this book, is really talk about it. It's one of those that stuck with me. So, it makes me think a lot about the cult of reality television. Why do we watch these shows? The Book of Essie in particular really draws a strong parallel between the actual TV show 19 and counting, I think 19 kids and counting, 19 and counting, or 20 and counting, 21, whatever number they ended up at. This centers around the Duggar family, another very religious, pious, almost old-timey, um, puritanical family that has a zillion kids and then it turned out that the oldest kid Josh Duggar was um, oh, was not exactly who he said he was he also had political ties and it turns out that he had been molesting several little girls when he was a kid including two of his sisters so while I was reading the book of Essie it made me think a lot about that show 19, 20, 21 and counting and the Duggars and I actually used to watch that show partly out of morbid curiosity partly out of just entertainment value and I was fascinated like everyone else by the juxtaposition between this show and the reality of what was coming out about Josh. Um, and it made me think about why we watch these shows, what it says about us as a society. It's not all bleak. This isn't an indictment on reality TV. Again, I am the first to admit that I watch these shows a lot. I love The Bachelor. I love um, the terrible housewives of insert city name here. I, I love watching Hoarders or Intervention or all of those shows that seem like big train wrecks and yet I can't look away. So Andy Denhart of Reality Blurred, the blog that centers around all things reality TV, gave a TEDx talk a few years ago in which he he took it all the way back to Mr. Rogers, one of the originators. I wouldn't necessarily call him a reality TV star, but he did have his own children's television show on PBS. And he espoused this value of, I am special, I matter. Andy Denhart takes that value and um, takes it into the world of reality TV. Here are all these seemingly unremarkable people, but they are special. They matter. They have an entire show revolving around them. And so we can watch and vicariously think that we also matter. It extends into our social media lives as well. We put out these tweets and every time we get a heart or a like or a retweet or a smiley face or whatever, whatever it is, or some kind of connection, it's validating that sense of um, our worth in the world. I don't know that I see it necessarily as um, optimistically as that, but it is an interesting thing to think about. He also talks about just the access that it gives people. Um, hearkening back all the way to American Family with Lance Loud, an openly homosexual man, which at the time was not really heard of, not accepted but 
by putting him on this reality TV show and also showing his family, which had their own flaws, the parents were getting divorced. Um, it gave people more access to these different lifestyles, these different identities, all of these different things, religion, race, sexuality, age, gender, you know, just more access than people might have been able to get on their own, which can lead to more acceptance. Hello Giggles, the website, talked to several psychologists about why we watch reality television and it was kind of interesting the different views that they had. One is that it's just a plain old form of escape. <laughs> There's nothing um, voyeuristic about it because it's not like we're going to these people's yards, unless you are, in which case please go get help. <laughs> but we're not going to these people's yards with actual binoculars and looking into their windows once the show is over. When the show's over, it's, it's over. It's just an escape. Other psychologists said that it's a form of feeling more connected in an increasingly disconnected world. When you think about it, um, our face-to-face -face personal connections are decreasing as we have more easy access to people through electronic means, more instant ways to contact people. Now whether that means a an increase or a decrease of connection, I don't know yet. I just I just think it means that we're connecting with people differently now than we did, say, 20, 30 years ago. Reality TV is really a harbinger of that. Not a harbinger, but a, ref a reflection of that. And so by watching these people, we feel almost like we have a personal relationship with them. Sometimes we see ourselves in them. Sometimes we rally against or for them. It's almost a weird way of connecting with people with whom we have no actual connection with. And I can take that into the real world on social media as well. I feel very connected and very um, friendly with a lot of the connections that I have, say, on Twitter or here within the BookTube community, none of whom I've actually met in person. But still, I feel like I've got your back, guys. <laughs> I feel like we're friends. Let's hold hands and sing Kumbaya. <laughs> But if I saw you in real life, I don't know if I would even instantly recognize you, nor you me. So it's, it's an interesting kind of connection that we're having with people in today's technolo technological age. Another psychologist in that Hello Giggles article talked about how it's a way for us to live vicariously through people from the safety of our own couches. So we too can go to Italy on romantic dates on The Bachelor, or we can watch other people's hearts be broken without having to go through the trauma of our own hearts breaking. It's a way to kind of get out into the world without actually getting out into the world. So why do we watch reality TV? I don't know. For me, maybe it's escapism, or maybe admittedly sometimes it's a snarky way of validating my own life, which admittedly is not 100% grade A. Um, whatever the reason, it's interesting to think about, and an interesting book. Taking it back to the book of Essie, great book, debut novel from Megan McLean Weir. I highly recommend it. Let me know if you've read it, what you think in the comments, and what you think about this discussion at large. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll catch you next time. Bye.